Hello everybody, this is Arachnophobe, and welcome to part one of my aesthetics tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be covering the behind the scenes style, and when you see this, I assume that you already know the basics of Hammer, and a bit more than the basics, obviously, because you'll need to know that. Behind the scenes is probably the second hardest style when I have mapped, um, but it's very fun once you get the hang of it, and very easy. So, enjoy. I am going to start by creating a walkway that the player will walk on. So I'll select my entity tool, create a prop static, select that, and I'll place that in the center of the map. I press enter to create it, I double click on it, and for the world model, I'm going to scroll up, select MDL files, so I can view every single model file here. And search in walk. No, oops, walk away. And then lots of these um, will work. Uh, if you search catwalk, um, you get all these cool looking ones here. They have some of them have these nice destroying animations. But the problem is is that they don't have any collision to them. So I'd recommend using the walkway. There we go again. Models instead. So I'm just going to use this, which one should I use? I'll use this one. I'm just going to place that in the center. Now be sure you know which props you're using because oftentimes in behind the scenes map I'll see underground walkways and other things that are just terribly wrong. Um, so yes, after you've created that walkway, um, just go ahead and place an info player start on it. and that's where our starting position will be. Alright, now that we have this, we'll be able to create the rest of the behind the scenes environments around it. So, instead of just leaving it like this with the player on one tiny little walkway, I'm actually going to expand it a little bit, and when in behind the scenes, it is always important to know that it should feel like you can go anywhere. So I'm going to, instead of just selecting an L model and allowing the player just to go one way, I'll select a T model and provide the false illusion of freedom. So you'd want to expand this out a little bit, just let the player explore, but you don't want to, them to go off track that much. So there's lots of things that you could do. You can use a destroyed walkway, but in these destroy oh no, gone. for instance, this destroyed one here, or this one, there's only two sadly. So I'm going to use a destroyed walkway, and I'm just going to move this over and duplicate it, and then I will use this T segment here again, and just create another walkway that goes behind the chambers. So then, since you're never actually going to be over here, you can use a cheaper model of walkway so the game will run faster and the file will be less sized I guess you could say so if you do if you search in cast walk as I told you not to with close up ones you'll find all these walkways here as you can see they say low res on them because they're low resolution so I'll just click apply and let's move that up and just duplicate that over a bit and we're just going to make these disappear behind some chambers as for over here I'll continue on the pathway Even with the stair models that I see done wrong a lot let me find the correct ones here we go is that if you notice it has these curvy sections on the front um, and if I actually exit out of this my hammer is being slow today we'll see that this doesn't and you can see through that so that's going to make a problem so what you'll want actually want to do is do that and then search walkway and then 
find 64 models or 32 or yeah just 30, 64 or 32 and select the one course with the yeah select the one with the curved end and then place that next to the stairs or where the stairs will go I guess alright so I have the whole course set up here and what I'm going to have is a test chamber here have one here have one here and have ones on the sides that just go on as far as the eye can see now the big mistake I see when creating test chambers a lot people sometimes think is that they're like smaller than they actually are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the correct texture of the test chamber so you s open your textures browser and down in filter here you search plastic and now these textures here are the correct ones if there's two textures always use the first one if it's close up and always use the second one if it's far away so I'm going to select the gray one because that's the most used one and it normally just looks the best and I'm just going to scale my grid size up big make sure it's pretty big and make sure to make these chambers pretty big because so, you'll have to fit a whole entire test inside them so you can move it over away from the walkway here if you want just give it a tad of space so you can put in some detail props now, when you're making behind the scenes always be sure to leave it slightly open but make sure it's really really like close like I don't have this way out here and just a tiny little box and another one there another one there I have it all the way up close and that's a very important thing to keep in mind it just looks so much better and it feels so much more realistic which brings you to another topic when you're creating behind the scenes you always have to make sure that you keep in mind realism I mean this is after science you have portal guns but I mean it's still earth and physics still do apply so you don't just want floating test chambers and floating walkways except in some cases I guess when that's part of the story but normally it's not so always add supports to your walkway and always add supports to your chambers so I'm just gonna seal this off here Oops. yep that's accurate size for a chamber and make it like that and since you're never actually going to see how thick that is you can just scale that to that and now with these chambers I'm going to select all of them I actually should have done this first and I'm going to change the textures to no draw. It's weird, my hammer is lagging. Right. And now I am just going to select all the sides that you actually can see from walking along and set those to test chamber textures. Bam, there you go. Now, um, Oftentimes, these test chambers here aren't just this one plain texture. Oops, I need to texture that. But they're mo a, s a giant jumbo mumbo. Yeah, that's the correct term. Of different textures, um, all into one face. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select this, and this is the way I prefer to do it. I feel it's the fastest. Let's see which way are we facing? We're facing that way. I'm just going to cut this a few times with this tool and make sure you click it so both the sides are white so then I'll press enter and now the chamber is divided there now I have a face that I can texture four different sides on so I'm going to do is I'm going to set this side here click there to this yellowish one here and I'm going to texture that one 
and that one here to framework, which is probably yeah, which is a really important texture in behind the scenes. So you search frame, and you get all of these textures. Now let me explain something here. So lots of these textures are what's called vertex textures. Uh, vertex textures are textures that are used to annoy people because they change their lighting depending on where the player is. Like, I seriously don't know any use for that. So, when you click on the texture, make sure it doesn't say... Let me find an example here. I swear that... Yeah, see this one down here? It says vertex. So ne you pretty much never want to use that. Um, always use, like, the first one you can of that texture because the rest are probably, like, cheap duplicates of it. So I'm going to use this texture there to base this yellowish look, I guess. Maybe I'd want a bit more contrast there, so I'm going to actually change that to this dark framework there and change that one to the yellowish one. So yeah, just play around with that. Find a look that you like and you'll get, you know, something looking nice like that. So, now I'm just gonna do that to the rest of the chambers. Alright, so now I've textured these chambers the way I want, and now I'm just gonna go to the pillars that hold up everything. So, what you want to do is you wanna browse in your texture browser, or nature thing, and then search metal. Not there we go. Search metal, and then there's these four here. Now I'd recommend using these ones here. I feel they look the nice, and put them close to your walkways because these are what hold they, them up. So just put them close. Press enter, and we'll create a little vertical beam there. And then you can expand this. Higher, lower, just expand it in general. And I'm just gonna put a few here and there to hold it up. And I'm not gonna put one over there because it's collapsed. It would make sense on how it collapsed. You can also put them next to test chambers. I feel that works nicely. Um, just kind of put them in areas that make sense, really. And now if you see, we have the, um, we can line these three up there. So then what we can do is you can run a cross beam going through all of them. We select our prop static again, click on there, and select joint, and not select I guess, but select this model there, and then leave that on there, and there, and there, and then that hides this, um, yeah, that, whatever it's called. And then to make this look right, because that doesn't exactly look that right with that going around it, I guess. You click the scale down button until you get this. And then you can drag these two in like that. And then it fits nice if you want. You can scale that up one more. You can do texture scaling. So after you have that adjusted, See, it looks nice there. You, um, it's now time to go on to the fun part, which is detail absolutely everywhere. So, I'm just going to start with these chest chambers here. Along these framework textures, especially these yellow ones here, it looks really nice to put framework props. I raised my hand there in amazement. 
and so you search frame and these square beam off models are what you want to use um, they also have skins here so you can see that these are used in overgrown maps that's in behind the scenes that's also behind the scenes and that's used to overgrown behind the scenes or not behind the scenes whatever your preferences I like a combination of these two here but on a bigger scale so I'm going to select that and move it over and move that and apply it to the wall I'm also going to scale up so I can get a better alignment of that so now with these props something really important I have to remember especially this prop here is to ena enable disable shadows that was a bit on the tongue there um, so yes make sure shadows are disabled because otherwise it just casts an ugly black texture against the wall and as you can see that looks very nice and this these textures here I'm pretty sure this um, yellow one here it has good bump mapping from what I've seen so it's going to look nice with that also so it'll look like these have shadows even though they actually don't so then in skins you can select a few you're going to select that one and that one and change the skin to 2 which is the blue skin and now they're blue and I can use these on pretty much any of these props here. I'm not going to do it on this wall here um, I almost forgot about these here. In the walkway, it is crucial to have a start point and an end point. So you don't just want to spawn randomly on the walkway because that really doesn't make any sense. So you could put a door there to show where you came from. And at the end, I'm going to put a door up here to show where you need to go. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll just flip that. And there I have walkways. I'm going to place a vertical door there, which is the most common door in behind the scenes. So if you search vert, um, you'll see the Aldi's here. I'd recommend using the locked one. It's pretty much just everything you'd need. So I'd recommend using locked for the entrance and the animated for the exit. But I'm not going to worry about those in this tutorial here. I'll do it in another one in which I cover indoor behind the scenes. So move that around until you kind of get this here. And then you should have that. So you'll walk this way up here. And I'm going to place another door. So I'm just going to make this the locked model. So now I have the entrance and the exit. And that's that. Um, with the walkways, it's holding them up so they're not just magically floating. It's very simple. Just search support. So then you get walkway support. And you have these things here. I prefer this one. It looks all nice. going to move those and put them on the pillars. So now I'm just going to add some vacuum tubes. These are very important. It really gives it life. So you select prop static again. Double click on this. Search vac tube and you get all of these beautiful models here. I'm going to use a straight version. So I have two sets of vac tubes going around, and now for the entrances and exits of the vacuum tubes, I'm going to create a flange, or use a flange model. It looks very nice. Along the entrance, along the entrance, are just on there. So you search flange. It's pretty much the only prop. 
and you just move it there so it's at the beginning of the vacuum tube. Like that. There we go. And just it feeds into the chamber like that. If you want, you can do a double. That sometimes looks pretty good. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some arm walls in. Nah, these really make your BTS look amazing. So you want to put in a prop static and select it. Create arm and just these are the models you want to use. So you'll select that and you'll uh, always freaking turn it to face the correct direction you do not know how many times I have wanted to face palm through my head because of people having the arms going like this the arms do not connect to the chamber that way they cannot connect to the chamber they're just floating there always always do this please please Please. <sighs> Alright, now that that's over. Um, I shall add arm walls absolutely everywhere. Alright, now to add some lighting. Um, I'm going to start with just simple lights and save the shadow casting light for later. I normally like to do that last, so I'm going to create a instance and function instance. There we go. And I prefer this because it looks the nicest. And you'll click here. You'll click browse. Click on instances, lights, and then you have all these different lights here. So I just like the top one. Um, click apply and you have this light here you can turn it in which way you want and flop it on a wall like that and you have a light congratulations over here I have a plan to put the projected texture which if you don't know is a shadow casting light that can project dynamic shadows which is very sexy if you ask me so you're going to instances behind the scenes and the wall module is oftentimes in my opinion the best to use for this and it's just this really nice instance that valve generously put in and it's just a giant wall of lights so you can just put that in where you want and slide that down When I'm using instances, I go to view instances, sure no, to get rid of that ugly yellow tint there. As you can see, I have this nice wall module there. It's very nice. Um, so then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and slide that forward a little bit and type in projected yeah, and then environment, projected texture, click apply, and then um, normally you'll have multiple of these in the map with names and the sad part about these is that you can only have one active at once so you have to creatively switch between them so flags you want to click always update moving light because I'm going to put things going through the vacuum tubes maybe and enable shadows is set to yes and I'm just going to position this into a place where I think I can get the most of it. So, kind of fly around your map a little bit and try to figure out a good place that you can see most of it. And at the um, same time, like, have some hidden behind walls and stuff so it'll cast some interesting shadows. Oftentimes, when using walkways, if you shoot it from below, like right here, which is actually 
now that I think about it, probably what I'm going to do. It creates a nice texture thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do that. So once you've found the correct angle that you like, you just kind of move the projected texture into that area. RZ here, set it to something like a thousand for small distances. So I'll bring it only up to there. I want it more. So a thousand maybe, one thousand five hundred. Yeah, that'll do. So do that, and then it, with its brightness, I like to change that to around four or five. So I'm going to set that at four. Click apply, and you have that done. So now we want to have some beautiful shadows all over our map. And so, let me pick here. Oh yes, trusses and gantries and stuff like that. Those are very good to use. So, grab a prop static, flop it in your map, select it, um, and search truss, and you have all these nice trusses here. Um, that one looks nice, that one looks nice, all of these really look nice. So I'm going to use this cheap model here, since it doesn't have collisions and you're not going to run into it. And I'm going to put this somewhere that looks like it's actually doing something. Um, yeah, like right there. Uh, and then I'm going to slide that down. So what about like right there, I guess? nice and I'm just gonna put those along some of the walls of test chambers because that's where they're actually supposed to be used all right so I have a few of those trusses in place and now up here I am going to place some of those giant metal gantries and trust me they are giant like they're, they're absolutely freaking literally huge like see that it takes up like my whole map essentially. So I'm just going to scale it up pretty big. <laughs> Excuse me. Move that up like that. So then we have this interesting kind of ceiling to the area. Even though technically it's still see through. And move it up just a tad. Like that. I'm going to make these just to go to the top of that. And on top there, I'm actually going to place another test chamber. Oftentimes, the behind the scenes area looked nice with the ceiling, or walls, I guess. They look good sealed in. And I don't really like a skybox, like, around it. Well, I mean, I do, but thing is, is that if you have lots of the skybox visible, it tends to kind of really break the feeling of you being in a giant industrial factory area. So I'm going to grab my plastic texture again. I'm going to seal in this whole place here. So, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Whose name? I, I won't say it. Alright, now I have this whole place surrounded by a skybox. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these test chambers here to function details, which is just simple optimization. So, let's do one last final thing behind the scenes, and that is to put wires everywhere. Now wires are a very, very big part, because of course it requires lots of electricity to run this. So I'm going to start by selecting a move rope, placing it in my map, and really you don't need to do anything about its name yet. So then I'm just going to duplicate it, put it over here, and ignore the dog barking in the background. And then, just 
search keyframe rope, click apply, it gives you this fattened move rope, and I name it wire one, or whatever you want to call it, and I select this, and set the next keyframe to wire one, click apply, and then exit that, and as you can see there's now a little rope going between them. So I'm just going to go through and position these around the map. have all these in place here. And um, they look very unrealistic, just going from point to point in a straight line. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a wave, I guess you could say. So I'll select the first, move rope, and under slack, I'll change it to 100. I think that's a good value when you really don't know what to set it at. Um, lots of dangling ropes look nice. Like they're kind of low, so I'm going to set that to 160. Give that a flop. I'm just going to set that to 130. So those are one kind of wire that you can do. Another kind of wire you can do is by selecting prop static favorite kind of prop. Double clicking it and searching cable. Cable. Cable, cable, cable. And just go through and look at all the different wonderful cables I have. Especially these ones. These ones just look absolutely stunning. Especially that one up in the lower left corner. Nah, yes, right here. Lots of these ones look nice. hard to find a place to put them though sometimes, so I'm just going to have to keep that in mind, since these ones are a lot more exact. So that's that with the cables and everything. Um, one more final thing, I keep on adding final things, is sound. Yes, sound. This is a visual tutorial, so obviously there's going to be sound. So, an atmosphere in any game environment needs sound. So, I'm going to correct, to select a simple sound here. And I'm um, going to use that. So, first, set the, your entity to an ambient generic. Apply. Sound name. Browse. Ambient. And there's lots of ambience. Ambient. Not gonna. So this ambient space sounds really nice. It's just there. these watery ones here oftentimes don't sound the best. Yeah, see the, no, no, I don't want that one. But those watery ones, I don't know. sound good. Yeah, that one it sounds like there's distant machinery working in the background. Now that I have my sound selected, I'll click flags, uncheck start silent, and check play everywhere, click apply, and that's how you put sounding level. Now let's go ahead and test. Alright, so I'm going to compile now. It turns out that F9 is also my recording pause key, so I didn't record any of the in-game footage. But, I will not spoil it, and press enter to compile. Alright, well here we are, and right off the bat, there are so many things that are wrong. Um, um, the lighting, first off, is deadly. That is just, like, the ugliest thing ever. It's rather nice with the start and everything. So I'm going to add fog to level now, which is something that I forgot. And fix these with Q maps. And yes. So first I'm going to add fog to level. So create an instance, so instance 
and click outside of your map somewhere. Just make it easy to reach. Select your instance. Properties. Change its file name. All the way down here. To global ends. Here we go. And I just prefer to name it fog. There you go. And you can just leave that. As you can see, it appeared in our map over there. I'm just going to leave that. And now I'm going to create a logic auto. So I create a logic auto. And I go to outputs, add, on, map, spawn, fog. And here I get a giant drop down list of different kinds of fogs. So I use BTS, which stands for behind the scenes. Click apply. It'll say it's an invalid input, but it really is, so don't listen to its lies. And now I need to create a cube map to fix the deadly vacuum tube. So I'm going to create one here. Cube map, environment cube map. Click apply. Always move these up to the player's head. Alright, compiling, I will see you in game. In game, as you can see, it looks very nice except for the skybox, it's just pitch black. So you can just fix that in the map properties by changing the skybox color to just sky underscore black instead of sky black no fog. Whatever it is. And yes, thank you for watching. Bye, bye. Oh wow, that sounded really weird.